Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to the Canola Growers Association for the opportunity to speak to you today regarding grain bin safety. My name is Rhonda Copeland. I'm the Extension Coordinator at the Boys of Maine GOSA office at, for Manitoba Agriculture Food and Rural Initiatives, and I take the lead on the Provincial Farm Safety Team. My name is Jeff Shaw. I am the Provincial Farm Safety Coordinator for Manitoba. Today we would like to briefly discuss the issues surrounding grain bin entrapment and bin storage safety. The reason it is such an important part of what we think about when doing our day-to-day -day operations on the farm is that asphyxiation runs in the top 10 killers of farmers every year in farmers ages 15 to 59. We've all heard stories in communities where people have climbed in a grain bin and not come back out. Just a quick note that one third of those that have been asphyxiated are children. Grain entrapment typically happens in one of three ways. Moldy or moist grain can form a crust and uh, along the bottom of, or through the bin and a farmer will walk over it and it will let go and the farmer can become buried. Also, grain stored in poor condition can co collect against the bin wall. Lots of farmers will go in and try and chip that off the bin wall and the, the grain will come down and fall onto the farmer and bury them. The best thing to do is take a shovel to the outside of the bin and bang the bin from the outside. Please don't go in the bin, bin and start banging inside. Flowing grain can entrap and bury you within seconds. When drawn from below, grain can act like quicksand. It is more important today since we have high capacity loading systems. The days of the small augers are gone. We have a grain wagon here and we have our, our farmer in the grain. I'd just like to show you the amount of time it takes for that person to go through the grain. So we're gonna let the grain go. And as you watch, they immediately sink right into the under, underneath the grain. And, and that's, that's just how long it can take for, for you to sink down into the grain. <clears throat> this diagram kind of shows us a little bit more. This diagram portrays what will happen to a 165 pound producer who is standing on grain when an auger is running in a bin. Within one second, the surface of the grain is at knee level. At this point, no amount of struggling will allow this producer to free himself unless they have something solid to grab onto. Within two seconds, the producer is up to the waist. The 165 pound producer has now added an additional 165 pounds due to grain, which totals 325 pounds. At this point, it would be nearly impossible to pull them out. At four seconds, the grain flow has pulled them down to their shoulders. This has added an extra 460 pounds, which totals 625 pounds. At six seconds, at six seconds, the producer is now under the grain with a combined weight of 800 pounds and at this point not getting any oxygen. As you can see, this happens very, very quickly and it is nearly impossible to ever save anyone who is in a grain flow. There are many preventative measures to keep you safe. Never allow individuals to enter grain bins or trucks when loading or unloading the grain. Try to use devices that permit unloading without the necessity of going into these confined spaces in the first place. Keep grain stored in good condition so they actually never have to enter the bin. Take precautions to prevent falling into these bins. Try not to put yourself into a position to begin with, but if you are in that position, please wear your proper protective equipment. Teach children the risks of grain bins. Ensure that access cannot be gained into the grain bin, and that may mean putting something over the ladder so that the kids cannot climb up into it. The general rule is to not get yourself in a position where you could get trapped in the grain. Always, always have somebody with you when you think you might have to enter the bin. I've heard the story more than once when a neighbor passed by, the grain auger still running and no one around, only to find the producer inside the grain bin, buried in the grain. Given the past year with the excess moisture, 
around, you will you should definitely be aware that grain stored in wet in wet produces carbon dioxide. This gas is heavier in air than air and will definitely cause drowsiness, headaches, and possibly death. Carbon dioxide is very dangerous in the wet grain. If you think you are to be in the bin with this wet grain, you must wear a face mask. And there are different kinds of face masks. This mask is generally used in the grain, but this is only for dust. Dust will be prevented from going in your mouth and nose with this one. If you think you're going to be where there's wet or moist grain, where the carbon dioxide is, you must have a proper mask. And these have like an insulation on the outside of them, and that's what will you will be able to breathe fresh air. These run about $40, you know, at the store, so they're not that expensive and very critical if you're going into a space where you think you might have carbon dioxide. The last thing out in the state today was confined spaces do fall under the Workplace Safety and Health Act. Work being done in confined spaces represents a very high risk job. These regulations are in place to ensure that everyone's safety and health is protected. It is very important that you take the time to produce and review these regulations with your workers and family to ensure their workplace is safe. The time to talk to them is not during harvest when everyone is tired and in a rush to get things done. This training should be done when everyone has time to listen and can ask questions. If something happens to an employee and if the regulations were not followed, you are the one negligent. This could result in penalties. And not only that, you'd have to live with the fact that somebody has been seriously injured or killed at your workplace. I'm not going to get into specifics today, but please check your own provincial legislation regarding confined spaces. And just a quick note on time. Many producers say to us, we don't have time to do this, put guards on. We don't have time, we gotta hurry up and do things. The amount of time it takes for an accident can take a year of your life working on the farm, a year's salary, so that two minutes that it takes to prevent an accident is key in, farm, in all farm safety. So in conclusion, we just want you to know that it's important that you think about working safely and make sure that everyone is safe around you. It is much e easier to deal with a crisis if everyone has been giving the information on how to stay safe. Training and knowledge are the key to safe work. Learn the hazards, follow the rules. So on behalf of Jeff and myself, thank you for the opportunity to give you a few tips on staying safe on your farm. Enjoy the rest of your meeting.